Mark Appel throwing a shutout inning in his debut nine years after he was drafted in the first round by the Houston Astros. It has been a long, strange trip, and nobody better to tell us about the journey than Mark Appel himself. Joining us now on High Heat NTT Ballpark Cam in Philadelphia. Mark, thank you so much. I know that you have been pulled in a lot of different directions. Have you taken a moment to breathe and take it all in? <laughs> Uh, a little bit. Uh, this morning was actually the perfect opportunity to, um, you know, since Wednesday when I pitched, uh, you know, family was in town. And then I, I actually got in in last night's game, my first back to back of the season. Um, so R Rob told me I'm down today. Uh, so I, I get to kind of relax, recover, try to breathe a little bit. It's been it's been overwhelming. You know, it's funny. He says that you're down today talking about Rob Thompson, the interim uh, manager there for the Phillies. But you're like, listen, man, I've been down for nine years. I want to pitch. How eager is it uh, in terms of wanting the ball all the time and finding that balance of making sure that uh, you, you do rest and you do get your time? It, it's it, it's been an experience to figure that out this year, uh, being a reliever for the first time and having some success. You know, I love pitching, um, especially now that I'm healthy. I'm able to feel like I can go out and compete and and figure out how to get these guys out. Uh, so I, I want the ball as often as I, as I can. And so a lot of it comes down to just having a good relationship and trusting the organization to do what's best for both for me and for for the team. Mark, for those of you that aren't that familiar uh, with the story, you were drafted first in 2009, declined not to do that. You were then drafted in 2012 by the Pirates, wanted to make your commitment to Stanford. And then 2013, the Astros came a calling in the first round. At that time, why was it right? Well, uh, <laughs> I couldn't go back to school for another year. That's, uh, that's number one. <laughs> um, I was born and raised in Houston. Uh, Houston's been my home in the off seasons um, ever since college. And so um, the, the fact that Houston was in this rebuilding process, um, you know, they had the first pick that year they drafted. They drafted me and, you know, in the year before they signed guys like Carlos Correa and Lance McCullers. There's a lot of excitement around the Astros organization. And, and I was excited to be a part of it um, when I signed back in 2013. So. You sign in 2013, and then admittedly you struggled in the minors for three seasons. The Astros end up uh, trading you over to the Philadelphia Phillies, and you struggled there too and, and had some injuries. Tell us a little bit more about that path and then being out of baseball for a minute. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of cool to have hindsight being 2020 and being able to kind of reflect on the whole my whole career. Um, seeing some of the things that happened when I was at the Astros organization, just how my body started breaking down. And then once I got over here uh, to Philadelphia, um, you know, I, I basically played half of a season both years in 16 and 17. I had elbow and shoulder injuries. And, and by the end of the 17 season, I was, I was uh, just overwhelmed, exhausted, kind of, you know, mentally, emotionally, spiritually drained um, and kind of reevaluated why I was playing baseball and whether I wanted to continue that offseason. So in 2018, your shoulder is killing you leading into that spring training. You end up having shoulder surgery uh, in October of that year. You're out of baseball. You said, OK, I'm done. But something in November of 2020 changed. What was it? Well, I, I think it, it really started back in 2018 when I when I decided to have surgery. I, I went through that whole season um, you know, and I say season, I wasn't playing. I, I was living life as, it, as if I'd never play baseball again. Uh, but I was actually around the ballpark a lot. Um, my college roommate, Stephen Piscotti, um, he's, he's been through a, a, quite a journey in his own right, um, going from St. Louis to Oakland. Well, he was in the a AL West, and he would come to Houston where I was living. And so I was going to Ball, you know, to games at Minute Maid Park, wearing an A's hat, rooting for Steven. Um, and I didn't feel any, like, bitterness or resentment or anger about how my career had turned out. I had a lot of peace about it. Um, and then I, I was kind of reevaluating. I was like, man, I love playing baseball, but I've been hurt for so long. Like, is there any opportunity for me to get healthy? And that's when I, I got MRIs and, and saw a doctor and decided to have surgery. Um, and then from then on, it was it was really a long rehab process that, that I kind of had to – navigate and I turned over a lot of stones and tried to figure out hey why was I hurt in the first place and what can I do to to you know maintain my health if I want to play again um, and 
you know, at the end of 2020, uh, you know, especially through COVID and all that, I felt like I was in a good spot um, to call the Phillies and see if, if they'd, they'd have me back and, and try to play. And you did just that. You call assistant GM Ned Rice and say, hey, I want to make a comeback. What was that conversation? Uh, it was it was I think it was a really fun one for me. Um, you know, I, I don't know if if they knew much about where I was in life and whether I was thinking about coming back or not. Um, so it was kind of like this whole idea of like, oh, I'm kind of going to try to surprise them a little bit. Um, they didn't know about the, I, the the surgery or any of the rehab process. I kind of tried to do all of that on my own um, and, the t you know, some, some people that have helped me along the way. Um, so it was really fun, and, and obviously the Phillies in the middle of the offseason, they're making moves and they're trying to do a lot of things. So um, it, was, it was kind of like, hey, yes, we're definitely interested. Um, let's, you know, let's have another conversation probably after the new year. Um, and, and that's kind of how I got plugged back in into the, uh, you know, into the communication. Take me through the telephone call when you got called up. Uh, well, uh, it, it actually happened after our game in Lehigh Valley. Uh, we, we were playing against Norfolk, the Orioles AAA, and uh, we lost the game, and our manager, uh, we, we had heard everyone needs to come into the clubhouse. Um, you know, he, he, he's got something to say, and that's usually not – not common, um, you know, but we thought it was a well-fought game. You know, we scored a few runs in the ninth, almost mounted this comeback. And and AC, our manager, uh, he comes in and he's he's kind of angry. He's like, hey, guys, you, you've got to be prepared. You've got to be prepared every single day. Um, and if you aren't prepared, we're going to lose games. We're going to lose games like this one. Um, and we're going to keep losing games if you aren't prepared. And, and if you're not prepared, you're never going to go to the big leagues. And that's the goal here. And then he, he stops and he goes, and that's exactly what, what this guy's done all year. He's prepared himself. And he looks at me and he goes, Mark, you're, you're going to the big leagues. I was absolutely shocked. <laughs> I, I didn't even know what to say. You know, I was thinking this whole time, I'm like, who is he talking about? Like, I felt like it was a good game. Like, no one really, you know, everyone played hard. Um, it was it was completely I, – I was speechless. Um, and, and everyone was there and they just – were cheering for me and and everyone get, came up and gave me a hug it was it was a really special moment um just like overwhelming and emotional i get chills just thinking about that right now mark as you tell the story you're 30 years old you're making your big league debut you were drafted you know in the first round in 2013 you were called the biggest uh mlb draft bust ever uh in terms of a pick why didn't you give up on yourself um you know, I, I felt like I, I still had something left to give if, um, you know, if I got healthy. Uh, now, what that was, I have no idea. Um, but by the time I had come back, I was totally at peace with my career and how it transpired. Even going into this year, I knew it, it might be my last. I didn't have a great year last year by any means. I made it through healthy. So that was, that was encouraging. I was like, hey, maybe one more year. If I make it through healthy, hey, that's great. Um, and if it's my last year, I'm going to enjoy every moment. Um, so I went to Lehigh. I was like, hey, I'm, I'm a reliever now. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to enjoy <laughs> it. I'm going to try to take it in stride. Um, even, you know, like I said, going into spring, I had no, no idea that this dream of mine that, that has been a dream for a long time could actually happen. I was at peace if it, if it never did. And I, I would have been really happy if it never did. Like the, the two, three months that I got to spend in Lehigh were, were some of the most fun that I've ever had playing the game. Um, and, and just the joy of playing baseball had come back to me, and, and that was enough. It honestly was. So getting called up is, like, far, far more than I ever expected or feel like I deserve. Um, and, uh, and, and so it, it's just been, it's been a huge blessing. The dream never died. You have retired six of the seven batters that you have faced. Final question for you, Mark Appel. Did the dream, did it match what you thought it would be? When you took the ball, you took the mound for the first time, did it match? The, the, the dream or this image that I had of making my big league debut for so long was this one picture. Uh, you know, I was a top prospect, quick to the big leagues, you know, try to help the Astros win a World Series. Um, and every single twist and turn along the way um, that led to this moment on Wednesday, um, I wouldn't have changed it for anything. Like, I think it made it that much sweeter, that much more special. Um, 
and just the fact that my brother and his wife were able to be there, um, it was it was everything and more than I, I could have possibly imagined. Mark Appel, you are a bona fide big leaguer. Congratulations. You have so many people pulling for you. This is tremendous. Thanks for your time, and thank you for sharing your story. Thanks, Alana. I really appreciate it.